Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about fixing and repairing. Part two. I almost exactly a year ago, I did a lesson on fixing and repairing and uh because uh I had a little um mishap this week with my printer, uh it reminded me of that lesson. I looked it over and I quickly thought of a lot of other things I could describe for you in English on the subject of fixing and repairing. For those of you that don't know, my uh my printer broke. I, let's see if we can see it. It's actually sitting here. This is the broken printer. Uh you can't see the new one. It's actually sitting over there um but I do actually have a new printer and it works great. I printed a test page yesterday but let's do a lesson on fixing and repairing so that you can learn some English. Here's how this lesson will work. I will identify a problem. I will identify something that we're all familiar with that needs to be fixed or repaired or even cleaned up a little bit and then I will talk about how we would do that in English. So, you'll need to not only read what I put on the screen, you'll need to listen to how I describe it. So, in this lesson, I'll talk a lot about fixing and repairing little things around the house. This isn't about, you know, fixing your car necessarily but more fixing things like um if there's a stain on your rug or something like that but you'll get uh You'll get the hint or you'll get uh the gist of the lesson once I get started. So, once again, welcome to this lesson on fixing and repairing part two. So, again, I'm going to identify a problem and the problem here is a wobbly table. When a table is wobbly, when you sit at it, it moves. My desk is not wobbly. It's firmly standing on the carpet and it doesn't wobble but you might have a table that's wobbly. The table might wobble. I'm saying the word wobbly a lot because it's a fun word to say. Um if you have a wobbly table, you might do this. You might put a piece of cardboard or folded paper underneath it. Um sometimes when we're at a restaurant, if the table's wobbly, we might stick uh something underneath to stop it. But our kitchen table actually has adjustable feet on the bottom. So, you can turn them in and out and then you can adjust the table so it doesn't wobble. Um and in an extreme circumstance, you could always cut three legs shorter so the table doesn't wobble but as you can see in this lesson, I'm going to identify something that needs to be fixed or repaired and then I'm going to talk about the ways I would fix or repair it. So, hopefully, you can follow along and learn a bit of English. A squeaky hinge. So, sometimes when you open a door and close a door, it goes creak, creak. You get um um you get um sound effects in this lesson today. So, creak, creak. Um and if this happens, usually what you'll do is you'll put a little bit of oil on the hinge. So, when you have a squeaky hinge, you will usually get a little bit of oil and you'll put that on the hinge so that instead of going creak, creak when you open and close the door, it's completely silent. So, if you have a squeaky hinge, you put a little bit of oil on it. Sometimes your printer doesn't work. Now, my printer completely died. We had a power outage. The power flickered one morning and I think that kind of burnt out the electronics inside of it and that's a pretty bad problem. I couldn't fix it but sometimes you just have a paper jam. The paper goes in the printer and then it gets all crumpled up inside like this piece of paper. In order to fix a paper jam, you usually open the front of the printer. You find the paper inside and you carefully and slowly pull the paper out and then you close the lid and you cross your fingers and hope the printer works again. Um at work, when the photocopier has a paper jam, it actually tells you how to fix it on the screen. It tells you what doors to open in order to fix the paper jam. Never nice to have a paper jam when you're in a hurry. A drafty door or window. So, this is a bigger problem probably in places where it's very cold in the winter. We sometimes have a little draft that comes in by a window or door. A draft is cold air from the outside in the winter that gets into your house. So, you might say, oh, my front entrance is very cold. I have a drafty door or there's a drafty window in the kitchen. 
The way you fix this is you buy something called weather seal or weather stripping. So, this man is putting some new weather stripping on his door. This is kind of like a soft material. So, when the door closes, it blocks where the draft is coming in. So, again, maybe not a problem if you live in a warmer part of the world but in this part of the world, um sometimes you have a draft and you need to fix it. Stained rug. So, a stained rug is not very nice if you drop your mug of tea or your cup of tea on the floor or your coffee which is probably worse. It might stain the rug if it's a very light colored rug. Now, if you want to clean a stained rug, you have a couple of choices. If you remember from the lesson on cleaning, you might get a scrub brush or a brush and you might scrub the floor with soap and water but if you can't get the stain out, you might rent a carpet cleaner, a machine that you can use to clean your carpet. So, um certainly if you spill coffee or tea, you should immediately scrub the floor uh, with soap and water to try and get the stain out of your rug. A clogged sink. So, we haven't had this very often but uh sometimes when you have a sink in your kitchen or bathroom, the water doesn't drain. You take the plug out or you pull the little thing to let the water drain uh and the water just stays because the sink is clogged and we sometimes in English say the sink is plugged. Um in that case, you might wanna use a plunger. This is called a plunger and when you use a plunger, it kinda puts pressure air pressure into the sink and pushes the clog through uh or you might want to use something called drain cleaner or Drano is the name we usually call it in English. It's also a brand name. You might pour that in your sink and that might remove the clog for you. You might also have a clogged toilet. We also say a plugged toilet. Sometimes when you flush the toilet, the water doesn't go down and that's not good. In this case, your only solution is to get a plunger. So, again, this is a plunger and you would use the plunger. You would plunge the toilet. You would use the plunger in the toilet uh, to try and push the clog through the pipes so that you can uh, use the toilet again as normal. Now, here's a very common one, a flat tire. I think there's only two car related fixes and repairs that I'm going to talk about because they're the only two that I know how to do myself. If you have a flat tire, the first thing you can try is to put air in the tire. You can pump up the tire. That's how we would talk about it in English. You would if you can still drive, if the tire's not too flat, you would find an air pump at a gas station and try to pump up the tire. Maybe you have a pump at home and you can try and pump up the tire. If that works, that's awesome. If it doesn't, you will need to take the car to a garage or a tire repair shop and they will fix the tire for you. So, you can always put air in yourself but uh you usually if it goes flat again after you pump it up, you need to take your car to a garage. And dead battery. Sorry, there might be three car related things. If you have a dead battery, If it's because you left your lights on or for another reason that you know you caused it, uh you can get someone to give you a boost. You can see if someone has booster cables and they can hook the cables up to their battery and hook the other end up to your battery and then you can try and start your car. In English, we say this is getting a boost from someone or giving someone a boost. Sometimes at work, every year usually at least once, a teacher will walk into the staff room and say, does anyone have booster cables? Um my car won't start. Can you give me a boost? And then someone might say, yep, I have cables. I'll help you. I'll give you a boost. Um but sometimes you just need a new battery. That happens as well. That happened to my sister earlier this summer. She came here uh for a campfire and her truck wouldn't start and she needed a new battery. Her battery was eight years old it was shot. If you follow my other channel, you'll know that when you say something is shot, it means it doesn't work anymore. A loose wire. So, sometimes in your house, you flip the light switch. You go to flip the lights on or flick the lights on. You can use both words and when you flip the switch, nothing happens. 
what might be worse is you flip the switch and you hear zzz, 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 and you see sparks coming out from behind the switch. That's bad. You should call an electrician unless you are an expert at fixing electrical things or electrical wiring. In that case, if you know what you're doing, uh you should turn the power off in your house and maybe you need to fix a loose wire. Bob the Canadian is not an electrician. This is not advice for fixing things yourself. If this happens to you, if you have a loose wire, you should call an electrician and the electrician will come and fix the loose wire. That is my recommendation unless you are an expert at doing that because it's dangerous. You can get electrocuted and that would be bad. You might have a lost button. This is a pretty simple one, right? Like a button from your shirt or the button on your pants. A button might fall off at some point during the day. Maybe the button from the uh sleeve of your shirt if you wear long sleeve shirts and then your only option to fix that is to sew on a new button. So, hopefully, you have shirts like mine where all of my shirts have one or two extra buttons on the inside uh on the side of the shirt. So, if you lose a button, there's an extra button. That's kinda handy, isn't it? I think this shirt has that. Yeah, there's an extra button right on the side here. Um so, if you have a lost button, you will need to get a needle and some thread and you will need to sew a new button onto your clothing. A tear or rip. So, apparently, it was cool to wear ripped jeans recently. I think it still is. So, you wouldn't wanna fix the tear or rip because it's cool. It's fashionable but for me, if my pants or my shirt have a tear or rip, usually, I'll stop wearing it because I wear my shirts for a very long time and by the time they get a tear or rip, I won't fix it. But if it was something simple like if on the sleeve here, I had a little tear or rip or maybe the thread came out, um I would get a needle in thread again and I would fix. I would mend it. Burnt out light bulbs. So, this is probably the most common problem. Um I think most of you probably have some experience fixing this type of problem. You flip the light switch and nothing happens. And so, you go and you get a new light bulb and you get you climb on a chair or ladder. Don't do don't do this unsafely <laughs> and you would unscrew the burnt out bulb and you would screw in a new light bulb. You would change the light bulb. That is the most common way to refer to it. That light is burnt out. I need to change the bulb. I need to change the light bulb. I need to put in a new bulb. Uh low oil. When you drive a vehicle like a car or van or truck, you should check the oil regularly uh and when you check the oil, you pull out the dipstick and then you look and you decide if it has enough oil or not. If it doesn't, you might top up the oil. So, you might decide, oh, it needs a half a liter of oil. So, you would put in half a liter and we would describe that as topping up the oil. You might in your vehicle have an engine light or an oil light that comes on and then you should check the oil with the dipstick and you might have to put in more than half a liter and you might need to take your car to a garage to have a mechanic look at it. But if your car is just a little bit low on oil, you might need to top it up with just a little bit. That's a fun little phrasal verb, isn't it? Top it up. You might have something that's bent. You might have a fork like this fork that's bent. When you have something that's bent, you need to straighten it. So, something can be bent. If it's bent, you would uh maybe with this, you would just use your hand to try and straighten it but certainly when something is bent, the fix is to straighten it. A leaky pipe. So, this is every person's worst nightmare if they own a home is to have a pipe that leaks overnight and ruins the floor of your bathroom. But if you have a leaky pipe, you might need to simply tighten the connections with a wrench. This is called a pipe wrench by the way or you might need to call a plumber and the plumber might come and replace. There might be seals in the pipe that are leaking. I'm not a plumber so I don't know all the details. But certainly, you might just try to tighten the connections with a pipe wrench or a wrench or you might call a plumber and have them come and fix it for you. 
frozen pipe. So, if you live somewhere warm, this never happens to you but in places like Canada in the winter, when it gets really, really cold, sometimes pipes can freeze. If you have a newer house, this probably will never happen. In our house, there's one corner of our house. If it's below minus 25 for multiple days in a row and if it's windy, we have to be careful that the pipes don't freeze. If the pipes freeze, sometimes people will put a heater by the pipes. They'll wrap warm towels around the pipe. They'll soak towels in hot water and wrap it around the pipes or they might use a hair dryer to try and thaw the pipes. Uh you want to avoid frozen pipes because frozen pipes can burst and then you might have a leaky pipe. So, first they freeze and if they water expands when it freezes, if it's frozen for too long, you might end up with a leaky pipe. Dripping tap. I actually fixed a dripping tap the other day. What I did is I took the tap off and I put a new rubber seal inside the tap and now the tap doesn't leak anymore. Um so, if you have a dripping faucet or a dripping tap, usually it just means you need to put in a new little rubber seal on the inside um and then uh you will have fixed the dripping tap and you won't hear the drip 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 at night when you're trying to sleep coming from the bathroom which is what I was hearing. A broken window. So, we don't often have a broken window on our house but on our barn, sometimes a window will break and the windows look like this. If a window breaks, you need to remove the broken pane of glass. That's the word we use in English and you need to put a new pane of glass in. So, a pane of glass is a piece of glass in a window. You remove the window pane. You remove the pane of glass and you put in a new window pane or a new pane of glass and then it's all fixed and you want to be very careful because broken glass is very, very dangerous. A busted handle. Um so, sometimes a door handle stops working. Uh we have one door handle in our house that needs to be replaced. It's very difficult to fix a broken door handle or a busted handle or a busted door handle. Usually, because it's very rare, if we have a door handle that is busted, I usually remove the door handle. I go to the hardware store and buy a new one and install a new one. Door handles last for years, like 20 years or more. Um it's rare for I think I've replaced two door handles in our house because they were busted. Um but yeah, sometimes you take it apart and you can fix it. Sometimes you can just replace one piece inside and fix it but usually when we have a busted handle, I uh I usually just replace the whole handle and then I don't throw the old one in the river. I bring it to the metal recycling place so it could get recycled. Uh a rusty mailbox. Now, some of you probably live uh in cities where you don't have a mailbox like this but this could be anything that's rusty. Maybe your lawnmower is rusty. Maybe um you have some tools that are rusty. When something is rusty, uh one thing you can do is you can sand it. You can take the rust off with a wire brush. You can use different things like steel wool to clean off the rust and then you can paint it. Our mailbox Um isn't this bad but it has some rust on it. So, I'll probably go remove the rust with a wire brush and some sandpaper and then I will repaint the mailbox or I'll put on some touch up paint. That means you paint using the same color just in the spots where you remove the rust. So, if you have something rusty, you remove the rust and you put on some touch up paint to clean it up. A bad or poor connection. The only thing you can do in this situation, if your phone says bad connection, poor connection, um the only thing you can really do is uh go somewhere else. Um you might be able to uh hold your phone up and kind of move around and try to get a better connection but if you have bad or a poor connection, that's uh your only real option is to walk or drive until your phone connects. So, when something is on the fritz, it means it isn't working properly 
or not working at all. So, earlier we had someone in the chat, Fred Moosterman, I think, and I said, Fritz, Fritz. Did I say Fred? Fritz Moosterman. And I said, uh, Fritz, your name is gonna be in the lesson uh, today. So, when something's on the Fritz, it means it isn't working right. You could say, ah, my printer's on the Fritz. That means your printer isn't working. Maybe it prints one page when you try to print three. Maybe it doesn't print at all. You would say, my printer is on the Fritz. If your computer isn't working, you might say, my computer is on the Fritz. It isn't working properly. I need to get it fixed. I need to get it repaired. Sometimes your phone will lock up. Like, it won't do anything. You you try to unlock it. You try to do what you wanna do and then nothing happens on the screen. It just stays black. You might say, my phone is locked up. Or you might have your email app open and you can't do anything. You can't exit. You would say, my phone's locked up or my phone is frozen. If that is the situation, you probably need to reset your phone. I know I had an older phone and when it locked up, I had to take the battery out. My new phone, I can't take the battery out. So, if it locks up or freezes, I I think if I hold the power button for 30 seconds, it turns off. But basically, if this happens, you need to figure out how to restart or reset your phone. Maybe your car has a small dent or ding. Now, these, this is a lot, these are a lot of dents. Remember, a dent is a big um, part, a big, I'm trying to describe dent without using dent. It's when your car has damage and uh, usually from an accident. This is from hail. A ding is a small dent by the way. Um if this is the case, if it's a small ding, sometimes you can buy um like a suction cup to pull the dent or ding out uh but sometimes you will need to take your car to a body shop to get it fixed. In Canada, when you get your car, the outside of your car fixed, you take it to an auto body shop or a body shop. So, this is my body. If someone says body shop in English, it can be a place where you buy creams and ointments for your skin but you can also take your car to a body shop to get dents and dings fixed. So, uh, my uncle actually used to own a body shop in our local town and he did this for a living until he retired. Uh, You might have a dull knife. You might be trying to cut your loaf of bread in the kitchen or maybe you're trying to cut a steak and the knife is dull. If you have a dull knife, you can sharpen the knife. Maybe you have a knife sharpener and you can go, sometimes you'll see on TV, a chef in a restaurant will be like, zip, 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 zip. It's just all uh, sound effects this morning, isn't it? Zip, 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 zip. And then they will use that to sharpen a dull knife. Maybe you wear jewelry. I wear a wedding ring. My wedding ring is maybe a little bit tarnished. When jewelry is less shiny, we use the word tarnished to describe it. Silver often tarnishes very easily. It means it loses that shiny silvery look and starts to look dull. So, when your jewelry is tarnished, you need to clean it using jewelry cleaner. There's special cleaners If you have a gold ring or a silver ring, you would buy a cleaner specific for that metal. So, gold cleaner, uh, silver cleaner Um, and then you would clean your jewelry with that so that it's not tarnished anymore. You might take your jewelry to a jeweler. You might have a jewelry shop actually do the cleaning for you if it's very, very intricate or difficult. Pothole. So, sometimes, People drive on the road and there's a little hole and people drive through the little hole and it gets bigger and bigger and eventually you have a big pothole in the road. When you see a pothole, you can't really fix it yourself. You need to call the city or you need to call the local government office responsible for roads. In my situation, I would call the township office. I live in a township. I would call the township office and say, hey, there's a big pothole in front of my house. Can you come and fix it? You can't fix this yourself although I know sometimes people get really frustrated when the government doesn't fix the hole quickly or the town service doesn't fix it uh, and so they might try and fix it themselves. Uh, 
a worn out toothbrush. This toothbrush still works but it is worn out. In English, when we describe something as being worn out, it means it still sort of works but it not really. So, this brush is worn out. It would be a good idea to get a new brush. Sometimes, the tires on your car are worn out and you should replace them. They're they still hold air and you can still drive but they're they're worn out. If it rained or if you had some snow, it'd be very slippery if you're driving on worn out tires. Um what I do is I go to the dentist. Every time I go to the dentist, the dentist gives me a toothbrush at the end. So, I don't buy toothbrushes. I get a toothbrush uh, every nine months from the dentist. I get a new toothbrush. Bad signal. So, this is similar to bad connection that we talked about earlier. Sometimes, you're somewhere and you uh you go to text or make a phone call and then it just says bad signal or bad connection or sometimes we say I have no bars. So, you know how there's the little graph. I don't think I can get this to uh to focus but there's a little there's little bars and you might say, oh, I have no bars right now. I can't make a phone call. I can't use the internet and again, the only thing you can do is maybe go climb a hill <laughs> or drive until um until you get a signal. And then we also call this poor reception. So, a bad signal, poor reception, no bars, all of those would be ways to describe uh not being able to uh use your phone or computer, right? Like you might be in a library and the the, the wifi is bad and you could say, oh, I don't have a good connection here. I have a poor I have a poor connection uh to the wifi. A lost contact. So, I don't wear glasses. I don't wear contacts but some people in my family do and sometimes they'll lose one uh and then they'll have to look for it. Maybe they'll take it out and they'll drop it on the floor and then we would say they have a lost contact lens. So, in English, we say contact lenses but we also just say contacts. So, if someone says to you, do you wear glasses or contacts? They're talking about contact lenses. We're just lazy in English and we don't always use the whole term when we're talking about something. Uh so, if you lose a contact, you I guess you get a flashlight and you look for it. I guess there's different ways to find a contact. One way that I think works, yeah, if you get really close to the floor, sometimes you can see it. Like, if you lay on the floor and look but uh you kinda need your contacts in to be able to see to find your contact. Is that part of the problem? I don't wear glasses so I don't know. Uh and then here we go. A tripped trip. So, in our basement, we have circuit breakers. This is a panel box and it has circuit breakers in it and sometimes one of the circuit breakers will trip. In English, we also call these trips. So, let me rephrase. A circuit breaker is also called a trip. If someone said the lights aren't working in this room, you could say did you check the trip or did you check the circuit breaker? So, this allows us also to say things like there was a tripped trip in my panel box. So, we can say that the circuit breaker tripped. It went bing. Is that the sixth sound effect? It went bing uh and it's in the off position and you might have to flip it back to the on position. If it immediately trips again, it means something's wrong. There's a short circuit. There's something wrong uh in that particular circuit in your house or apartment. So, again, this is a panel box. There are circuit breakers in the panel box. We also call them trips. There are trips in the panel box and sometimes the circuit breaker will trip because there's something wrong. Sometimes the trip will trip. (laughs) Did you get that? So, you have a trip to trip. That just sounded funny the more I said it. So, 